Um, just wanted to say if anyone, it's going to be because we only have half an hour, it's going to be a quick breeze through of a lot of things. If you have any in depth questions, please reach out, whether to Chris, to me directly, uh, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, because there's a lot of important and a lot of stuff that I love in here. So I'd love to entertain conversations uh, and answer any questions on uh, how to improve your business um, with MBD. And uh, some of you may already be in a position that you need MBD. You know, if you're working with companies like Northrop Grumman and the like, um, you know, that's the reason why they're uh, why they've selected Siemens and an X and they're driving the business the way they are because it makes everything um, better, helps us get to market quicker, helps us to do all of the important things for us to succeed. And so um, as you can see from my smile, really excited to share everything. <laughs> share the results, Savan. So 30% think they're, you know, pretty good at MBD. Um, uh, right in the middle of the road 20 percent and then the other half of the audience of on really this is why they're here right they really need to help you uh explain the value capability of mbd hence is why they're attending today's session beautiful as a follow-up since uh 30 percent uh feel good about their mbd yep. journey and their journey into being model-based enterprises let's ask um what everyone is using um you know what what uh, solutions they're using to yep. uh, to be so far along on their journey, and we can talk about that maybe after in the Q and A, or maybe it'll just be good information for me. And we'll go ahead and kick everything off. All right, the floor is yours, Savan. All right, I'm going to stop sharing my webcam, and we'll get right to it. All right, so um, yeah, as we've kind of talked about in Poke Fun, we're going to be talking about. Uh, the bummock or not being on the bummock and minimizing the bummock through uh, the use of uh, MDD. Our agenda for today is to talk about the integrated digital environment that is afforded to us by the Siemens software um, and the entire portfolio. We're going to be talking about the comprehensive digital twin and we're going to talk about MDD uh, reuse throughout the life cycle. Um, you know, by the life cycle, I mean <clears throat> going from a concept to having the product to market and all the things that happen in between um, and all of the reuses. The big thing is going to be reuse of data and not duplicating work like is the current or past paradigm. And we'll have a quick video also of uh, the walkthrough of the application. So. You know, if you're out there in bummock land, there's a lot of things like uh, ECOs, um, you know, time for setups, and all kinds of things that are below the waterline that um, you may or may not be aware of. You may be just um, including in your cost of doing business that we're going to be talking about eliminating. All right, so competitive advantage. Um, Siemens foresaw the things that are happening on the market and has invested heavily into turning the complexities of parts and complexities of assemblies into an advantage for their customers. I just recently bought a uh, Norelco shaver and it is interconnected. It um, looks at data of how I'm shaving my face, so it's got sensors, it has an app that goes with it, and it makes suggestions based on its use. Something as simple as a shaver nowadays has uh, IoT in it. So um, it's important for us to um, have the best solutions to leverage these complexities. You know, for a lot of people, these complexities might be putting them out of business or might be costing them a lot of money needed to branch out. Well, what Siemens has done is they've brought together the best in software and applications to bring this together through creating a comprehensive digital twin. Uh, you know, what is a digital twin? That is essentially a representation of your product, uh, whether it's a part or an assembly, and we are creating a digital version of it in the computer that you can analyze, that you can do all the things to, so that there's no surprises. 
um, personalized, adaptable, and modern. Um, look, all of our businesses are different, whether you're working on aircraft, whether you're working on shavers, whether you're working on whatever your product is, you are going to need different bits and pieces of the Siemens portfolio to do your business um, with the most of, uh, of efficiency. And so by picking and choosing the tools that you need and by customizing them, um, the accelerated portfolio and NX are, are quite frankly the best solution. Furthermore, um, you know, as to the flexible open ecosystem, you know, like my shaver, uh, there's an app associated with it. Um, each individual company might have one ERP system or another, one accounting system or the other, and Siemens has a product called Mendix that through low code or, or graphical programming, you're able to create your own apps for your product. You're able to create interfaces between NX or Team Center and your accounting system, your ERP system. So the solutions are very tailorable to your business. All right, so a little further into the comprehensive digital twin, you know, we start by designing our product and that's represented on the far left of this graphic by the digital version of the product. In the middle, we could take that either way. Um, you know, through Jack, we're able to simulate uh, people and how their ergonomics may be, the, you know, whether they might need a ladder or a trolley to work on parts. So you're able to simulate <clears throat> what we're seeing in the middle of the graphic, but also, um, you know, this is still, the main, this is the manufacturing phase. We're kind of visualizing some of the parts, how they may go together, and the solutions will help with that uh, stage of it as well, whether it be an XCAM, um, you know, the simulation, whether it be shop floor simulate, process simulating, all those kinds of things. And of course, optimization. And optimization comes in many forms as well. We've got, uh, you know, your CAE tools, we've got simulation, of every sort, uh, magnetic. Um, if if you need it, chances are that we've got a solution uh, for you. And you know, in this instance, it's going to be things like technomatics or process simulate to simulate the efficiency of filling these bottles. Um, how we might change the process to uh, to speed up production, those kind of things. And of course, given the architecture of NX. Uh, we can take all of that data and plug it back into our simulation, plug it back into CAD, and continuously improve our product. I mean, uh, when I was at Red Bull Racing, for instance, our FDA guy was also the guy that ran the test rig. And we were able to take his data and improve our modeling, our FDA modeling, and make sure that our um, vibration analyses, our stress analyses, becoming more and more accurate and we could rely on them more and more as, uh, as things carry forward. All right, so becoming the champion with MBD. As, uh, as the 30% in our group know, um, we are provided with a CAD model with all of the model. Oh, we didn't talk about all of these acronyms. Uh, let me back up a step in case anyone's not familiar with the acronyms. We're going to be talking about MBD or model based definition. We're going to be talking about PMI, which is kind of like the heart of all of this. It's product manufacturing information. So, as you see on this propeller, there's dimensions and tolerances and tolerance frames and hole callouts and all of the things uh, that are important for defining a product uh, for our shop floor, for our FDA analysts, for the engineers who are checking to make sure there's no interferences or no hysteresis in, uh, in the behavior of our controls or control surfaces, for instance, uh, given an airplane example. So yeah, so that's what PMI is, product manufacturing information. And then you heard me mention MBE. Well, as we start to use PMI, uh, which creates an environment for model-based definition, where your model is a single source of truth, we will end up having model-based enterprises. And we could say that, uh, you know, companies like Northrop Grumman, Pratt & Whitney are model-based enterprises. They are actually continuously hiring people to help with the architecture of, uh, of usage of uh, 
uh, of PMI and of MDD. Um, so anyway, so we're providing or being provided a CAD model with, um, with PMI in it. That information um, is basically a replacement for 2D drawings, or it is the modern use of it. And you'll see in the next slides where once we define this PMI in our model, the shop floor guys um, can look at that. There's no longer the need to interpret what a 2D view is because the model is a 3D model and it has the dimensions. Uh, as you'll see, the dimensions can be organized by views to help us make this transition. You know, people are going to need a little bit of time to adjust to the fact that they're not looking at a 2D drawing. Well, you can look at what kind of looks like a 2D view with the PMI in 3D space. Anyway, you'll see that that PMI is going to be reused. In, uh, in our simulation applications like CAE, FDA. Uh, you'll see one of the most beautiful applications of PMI is NXVSA, um, Variation Stack Up Analysis. Um, at a company that I worked at, we actually used Excel back in 2011, uh, where the 2D drawings were taken and the tolerances, the, um, the datums, the whole callouts were all interpreted into Excel, and through Excel, you could pick in one column one component, and in the row, you would pick another component, and through this Excel table, we could see what the variations may be between the two parts. Well, in, uh, in NX and in BSA, for instance, this computer board, um, you could see what the position is of the RS-232 port with respect to the sheet metal on the outside, and you will actually see basically kind of like an animation. It's going to move the components based on the true position, based on the tolerances and all those things, and help you figure out whether you are set up for success and whether the bulk of your assemblies and products are going to fall into the bell curve as desired. Uh, yeah, and then of course, the PMI advisor is basically kind of like an onboard GDNT expert that is going to be able to look at your, your PMI and is going to tell you whether there's errors. So in essence, if you don't know anything about GD&T, there's some uh, out of the box GD&T rules that um, it will you know, help you correct. So that's what you're seeing, like the red icons are basically saying that, hey, there's a, a warning or an error. And in that case, it's an error. And if you have a GD, GD&T expert, they can come set up custom rules for you. And then those custom rules can be applied, you know, 10 times over. You don't have to have 10 GD&T experts to float around the company and help individuals with their drawings. They create this uh, template of your company's um, GD&T standards, and everyone can deploy it uh, simultaneously. Um, so that would feed back into our PMI. And then, of course, as we make changes through the CAE and through VSA, it's all set back into CAD. I got that down arrow uh, below the PMI because from here, whether we're a design outfit that has their things manufactured uh, outside, or whether we are a manufacturer, or whether we are supplying a sub-assembly, um, the, the, the PMI is going to then be fed into the various other branches of the organization or organizations that are uh, bringing the product. Um, so here we have an example of a clamp with PMI on it, just so that you can see it. And in essence, if we were in an X or in Adobe, surprise, uh, you'd be able to rotate this model around and zoom in and, and analyze and look closer at the PMI. Um, what you're seeing on the right side is what you would obtain or a version of what you could obtain through NX and the technical data package to output this PMI and information, whether it be to internal customers, external suppliers, or whatever. What you're seeing on the right side of the screen is uh, Adobe. You double click on a PDF. Oh, and I forgot, Chris, we want to, if anyone's interested, uh, after the meeting, send us a note and I will share with you a sample piece of. Uh, I'll share with you a PDF, um, and you'll hear more about what that PDF will contain. But when you double-click on that PDF, 
um, you'll see something like this. Um, on the left side of the screen, this is actually a 3D representation that you can rotate, pan, zoom, and all of the things. On the bottom here, what you're seeing are the different views in which the PMI is laid out. You can have standards and such on one view, like the PMDB general. You can have front views and a variety of um, a variety of views to better organize your PMI uh, so it can be best consumed. If you're in the airplane business or you're making some large part um, and you know, you're accustomed to having to zoom around and try to find data A, where's data B? Don't worry, um, it is a piece of cake. With zoom to PMI checked, if you go and you click on data A, for instance, or data C, you'll see, first of all, that it's highlighted um, in, the, in the picture here. But if it was a big part in which it was off screen or something, it will zoom to it, show you where it is. If you find it, you can zoom out and do your thing. And by the way, this PDF can contain everything you need to convey um, for the product to be manufactured. Um, it, uh, it's kind of like a zip file. You can have drawings, you can have the CAD model, you can have a note, you can have whatever you want. Uh, running short on time, so I'm going to kind of speed it up a little bit. But uh, so here's an example of if I'm a manufacturing shop and you've supplied me with your part with the PMI, I received the CAD with the PMI, and a uh, process engineer through staged models can very quickly, you, essentially, I can train somebody in an hour or two to take this propeller part, a finished part, and create the models that uh, the shop floor would need to do up one, up two, and so on. And as you'll see in a minute, the key is to use the reuse PMI button, which is just going to take all of this PMI, you select what you need for this operation, and then you can inherit from this operation what you need for the second, and so on down the line. Um, the PMI is reused in fixturing, tooling, CNC programming, simulation. It's reused for electronic work instructions. And the crown jewel to me, having been a um, a applications engineer for a CMM company is an XCMM. With an XCMM, the process of creating a CMM program for something like a propeller is 15 seconds. It would have taken me 45 minutes at least in the past to create a CMM program for something like this between uh, looking at the 2D drawing and applying those tolerances into my report so that the things will be color highlighted properly. Um, setting up the program, setting up the vector normals for the probe, all of those things. So here we're looking at the stage model application and notice the reuse model view, the reuse PMI. Essentially what those are doing is you've created, created and organized your PMI by views and so you can choose to reuse those views if, um, if it suits and if you've you know, come up with a smooth process and essentially a template. I mean, look, if you're in the propeller business, um, once you create one propeller and the entire process, you do a save as, and 90% of your business is taken care of, and you're going from hours worth of work to minutes worth of work. Uh, and again, I invite you to reach out for, for further details, but we're running shy on time. Um, here's my favorite. Here's a little image. This is uh, NX uh, CMM. And essentially, by using the link to PMI, we're basically telling the CMM, um, I want to measure the features that I've selected the PMI on. And it is going to automatically choose, like I've got a surface uh, contour you see on the propeller face, uh, on the blade face here. It's going to choose the probe angles, the A and B angles. Um, this machine has like a pH 10 and Q, I think. Um, and it's going to choose your probe angles. It's going to take the data into the reports. So you no longer have to do that. And literally, uh, in minutes, the whole process is done. I'm going to show you a quick video here. It's only four minutes. You might have to speed through it. But what you're seeing here is we're opening a propeller, and I'm kind of showing a little bit more about how the PMI is organized. This view has all of our PMI visible, um, just or like a screen preview and so we can see everything. And then you'll notice um, I've got views with my PMI and I've got a PMI all which is currently showing, a PMI bottom, front, and so on and so forth. So you can see I'm showing
showing the different views that you can have and how you can um, organize it for, for best consumption depending on what you're measuring or what the, the shops will use. At this point now, we're going to go ahead and create a CMM program. This video, by the way, I think is four minutes and some seconds. And in four minutes, what you're going to see here is we're going to create a CMM program. We're going to realize that the part in its uh, default orientation interferes with the, uh, with the CMM. And so we're going to simulate the program, and we're going to fix it, and we're going to rerun it. So at this point, again, we're showing the fact that the PMI, you can choose the views that were already created. So let's say um, you know, we're creating a sub-assembly, and we're sharing it with a uh, OEM. Uh, we've organized the, uh, the PMI as we're instructed by their documentation that tells us what to do, and we can choose to apply those views and not recreate views. And you'll see here in a moment, now that I've selected that I do want to use the PMI that the engineers created, I can then apply it to my uh, views here in the CMM program so that I can custom tailor it a little further and so that maybe I don't have to look at the uh, PMI all view. Um, let me speed this up a little bit. Okay, so actually, let's leave this alone. So here, you saw that we're using the link to PMI button. That is essentially creating the program. We basically said, hey, we want to use all this PMI. And what you're going to see here for a moment is all of the PMI that has been linked. And in that process, you'll see here that it's created a CMM inspection program. We've got a header. We've got the sensors like your pH. Uh, 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 your probe head, you've got your inspection path, your report, and everything. And you see by just by right clicking generate, we've generated our program. I mean, I don't know what that was 30 seconds, a minute. We've created a program, and now we're going to simulate it. Um, and again, unfortunately, uh, Chris, it's 1127 now, and so we're running out of time. But you can see that the CMM is interfering. And we're going to um, rotate the propeller. So right now I want it to keep going and see if there's any other problems. We we'll stop it. We'll quickly go and I'm just going to kind of skip forward. You see that I'm hitting move and we'll rotate the part. And now that the part is rotated, we can rerun the program and um, I think, Chris, we can probably let, let them still see the screen if you want to. Uh... Oh, no, I actually have to move on and slide. Okay, so I'm just going to go, go forward, but I can share this video with you, and you could see essentially that um, I go and I change the probe angles so that um, uh, I'm not normal to the blade face anymore because that would make me, in the case of a five pitch propeller, which, by the way, part of this demo is I can just change the number of, um, of blades to say three or four, and I can go and rerun this, uh, this program. All right, so the industries that are using and that we help and that we partner with with these solutions, um, Marine, we have a huge presence in the Department of Defense and the things that they're doing, uh, both in the marine space and aerospace, as well as in civil, uh, civilian uh, aircraft. Uh, we're in automotive and transportation. We're in machining and heavy equipment, as well as shop floor, um, you know, configuration design and those kind of things. If you're in chemical processing or whatever business you're in, uh, these tools are very applicable. SIS, we've been in, in the Siemens software business, services, consulting, programming, training, you name it. We've done it for over 25 years. We do have a unique relationship uh, with the government. Uh, so if any of you out there are tied or as a supplier to the government, we have a lot of uh, unique relationships that can help you with collaboration around that. And again, to Savant's point, you know, methodologies, processes is, is, is where we have a lot of expertise as it relates to Savant and other um, uh, senior uh, engineers on our staff as well. So again, I had to run, run through that pretty quick, Savant, but you want to go to the next next steps and then we'll go to Q&A &A and, and, and adjourn from there. Yep. Yeah, so, um, you know, this presentation <laughs> said to keep down the iceberg path, just the tip of the iceberg. 
Um, <laughs> I would like to talk to all of you more and see how we can help. Um, you know, if you're interested, we'd like to do a data reuse health check with you and see, you know, how you may be using the tools better, um, what other tools maybe you can use in your business. Um, uh, should we engage in that kind of thing, we will provide you with a report telling you how we think uh, we can help you and, you know, help you measure what your return on investment would be with our solutions and with our consulting. Uh, we're here to help you, whether it be uh, if you need software, if you need help using the software better, and especially my expertise is in uh, CNC manufacturing and creating templates. Look, NX and the Accelerator portfolio, they are made for time savings. Like I said, once you've made this propeller, um, I can see and see it. I can change the number of blades. I can see and mem it. I can go back into the model and, like I said, change it from a five, uh, five blade to a three blade. Hit regenerate in each application and your work is done. So literally, um, instead of having to reprogram on a five axis machine this propeller, um, it's minutes instead of uh, the days that it might take to just fix this work. Thank you all for joining us. Please, 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 as I hope you can see, I'm excited about this stuff and I'm sorry it took so long. That's okay. Um, please reach out. Hey, Savan, let's let's answer one quick question. I want to be oh, respectful yeah. of everyone's time. My my asked a question. Does it also allow you to specify surface finish? Let me get back to you on that. Um, yep. I don't recall off the top of my head seeing a surface finish. I mean, of course, we can create a surface finish call out, but I'm not certain of. So yes, in part, um, there are ways to create a surface finish call out but I'm not sure of if there's currently a link to take that surface finish call out. And like, for instance, if you had a profiler of some yep. kind to measure the uh, tolerance, I don't know that there's a translation for that, but due to the customization that you can do in an X, uh, the answer is actually a yes, because you could create custom code using an X open to do that. But out of the box, I'm not sure, but if you let us know your email address, I will, uh, I will answer your question in, in better detail. Perfect, thanks, Savan. Uh, what, one last question and then we'll adjourn. Can you please explain in further detail what VSA is and its yeah. importance? Yep, uh, and again, before I answer that, in case people start to drop off, if you have further questions, we're not answering them, please reach out. Uh, we're not here to be pesky. We're here to partner with you and, and help you. Um, VSA, um, you know, variable stack up analysis. Essentially, let's say you're, uh, um, so let's say we're looking at this bottle. There's multiple uses in a case like this. If you're designing your molds or if you're checking the parts, um, it will basically look at the tolerance on the bone portion, on the male threaded portion of the bottle. It'll look on the tolerances that you've set up on the uh, bottle cap and it will tell you if there are cases in which there will be a problem based on your tolerances. You know, if the bottle is at maximum uh, material condition and the, you know, the cap is at some minimums and, um, you know, if that's a problem. Or, you know, in the case of a bolt pattern, if, um, if the true position on the holes is off by enough that a subsequent part is not going to assemble, it's going to tell you those things and actually does it in a graphical fashion where you'll kind of see, I mean, it's essentially running your assembly through all of the possible permutations and it's going to give you results like you saw in the image with the bell graph telling you that, hey, this uh, will work, this won't work, or there's a chance based on your tolerances that it really won't work. Again, to Savant's point, if you have any other questions, um, his email address is on the screen, his phone number is on the screen. We'll be more than happy to engage in further MBD discussions as well. So thank you everyone for your time today. We look forward to speaking with you soon and have a happy holiday. Thanks, Savan. Yes, and uh, let us help you create uh, your organization, your MBE. We can set up templates for you that do all of these things. And I, I'm excited and I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you again.